This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. From Water of Life Ministries in Plano, Texas, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is speaking through his servants to the world. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. Let us join Doyle Davidson and others of Water of Life, sowing the Word of God in spirit and in truth. Hello, I'm Doyle Davidson, servant and apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering locally to the body of Christ in Dallas and Fort Worth, Texas, sent by God to your house to declare unto you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. First Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, tell us what the gospel is. Now that Jesus Christ died by our sins, according to the scripture, he was buried, and he rose again the third day, according to the scripture. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, as he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, set me to heal the broken heart, Preach deliverance to the captives, covering a sight to the blind, and liberty, then better bruise. The word is nigh thee, even in my heart and my mouth. There's a word of faith, which I preach, you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved with the heart and believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believes it, that the Jew first, and also to the Greek, therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by his faith. I want to welcome everyone receiving this on live stream, Roku, Apple TV, YouTube, and other devices. Kathy Davis, close to my left. Good morning. Good morning. And there you. Doing well. Very good. We've got what we're going to introduce uh, the order of what's going to happen. First, it's going to be Terry and the Browns looking for a city, followed by Terry and Bye, and one of my boys, uh, I am, he said to me, followed by Terry Brown, God on the Mountain, and Solo, followed that, me or you. How's that? All right. Are we ready? We're among the shadows, living in a lonely land with strangers. We're a band of pilgrims on the moon, with dangers, burdened down with sorrows, and we're shunned on every hand. But we are looking for a city built above. Oh yes, we're looking here and there, looking for a city, looking for a city. yonder where. In the blessed Savior's love and mercy, though we may be strangers living in this world of care, we're always looking for a city built above. Oh, yes, we're looking.
was dark in my heart. You brought to light to me a child of darkness became a child of light and when my soul was so Oh, 
Down in that valley of trials and temptation, that's when your faith is really put to the test. For the God on the mountain, He's still God in the University of Missouri College campus. I was 26 years old. I had four years in the U.S. Navy as a hospital corpsman. I'd been accepted as a student in the 62 class of veterinary medicine. And the Lord visited me. With these words, you can read about it on my website. I don't want you to be a veterinarian. I want you to be a minister of the gospel. I couldn't do it. 
couldn't do it. I think there's an example in the Bible. Two men, two people, to God, God. One said, he go, and then, I think it's right, that one said, I'm not going, but he repented and did. Amen. Is that right? Yeah. Go work in your father's field. Huh? Go work in the field. And one said, I will, and didn't go. And the other said, I won't, but then he went. 1969, Lord visited me again in my car. Told me to sell 121. I practice obey. I did. Obeyed him, not knowing where I was going. And I knew you better not go back. You're in trouble. Actually, I never thought about going back. I did say this. If I've made a mistake selling 121, I'll build another one. I didn't make a mistake. It was God. It was Jehovah. It was Jesus. I had no idea what I was headed for. No idea. I just walked daily with the Lord. Listen to his voice. I heard him tell me to sell. I wasn't going to miss him again. I did not have a desire to disobey him. I just said, you got to do what God said. It's been a long struggle. You see, I'm not sent by the denomination. I'm sent by God. You see, I'm not a graduate of any seminary or Bible school. Nor have I been taught by any man, but I've taught, been taught by God. The Baptists wanted me. The Word people wanted me. The Catholics wanted me. The discipleship people wanted me. Thank God the man the symbols of God wanted me. I couldn't well, I consider doing it. It wasn't God. I had an opportunity to join Bob Gaviner, who I knew as a veterinarian when he was president of Meat Producers Incorporated. I spent two hours with him at his home in Dallas. Bobby said, Doyle, pray if you think it's God, come on. You can join me. I left driving north out of Dallas. I said, Lord, I don't believe this is you. No, it wasn't. I considered joining Derek Prince in 
back, I knew him very well. And Lydia was at their home. What a lot in 1971 and early 72. Visited him and Lydia almost every time they come to Dallas. Pat and I would pick them up, go out and eat with them, fellowship with them. Derek once said, you need to take my messages and preach them. I said, I don't think so. I didn't think so. And I was right. And oh, my God. Thank God. Amen. I met Leonard King in the 70s in Colorado. He was born in Bedford, Oregon, a lawyer. Leonard Goetta, Pat and I had some fellowship. Leonard and I got along well. One day, God spent that. Thank God. Thank God. Had a chance to go to Methodist Seminary. Wasn't right. Highly recommended. Wasn't right. I could have gone the lay route and become a Methodist minister. Wasn't right. One day God said, go to Plano. Make the people speak to the people of Plano. I said, and what do I say to? He said, read Acts where Barnabas and Paul. Or at Antioch, you'll understand. You got to read it? Right, Acts 13. Well, read 11 too. Okay, Acts 11. Amen. Okay, Acts 11. Amen. Barnabas was at Antioch. Right, it says, um, let's see, verse 22. These, the tidings of these things came into the ears of the church which was in Jerusalem. And they sent forth Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch who when he came and had seen the grace of God and was glad and exhorted them all with purpose of heart, they should cleave unto the Lord. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and much people was added to the Lord. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus to seek for Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. 13. And in 13, verse 1. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon, that is called Niger, and Lucia of Cyrene, and Maenon, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and, Paul, and Saul. And they ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. Dark Prince. A good friend of mine. He said to me once, you, you know, you and I have similar personalities. Not all together, but similar. Yes. Amen. Thank God. Derek tried to get me to join. Charles Simpson. I said, no, no, thank God, Glenn Rochelle, I said, no, Gary Henley, I said, no, he 
brother said about joining Bill Bay in business. I said, okay, let me be. I did. Bill and I got along very well. I knew more about God than Bill did. One day he said, you told me something it took me five years to see that you knew what you were talking about. I love Bill Bay. I'm sure he's a devil. Finally, Derek didn't know what to do with me. 1977, he wrung his hand. He said, I don't know what to do with you. I've never met a man like you. I said, fine. Thank you. I'll go. Another way. I never saw Derek after that, except in 88 in Fort Lauderdale. For about one minute I talked to him. That was the end of it. I was not to go with anyone. In 1970, sitting on my couch in Springfield, Missouri, God gave me a vision. Opened up John 15 to me. This vision amazed me. Opened up with a watermelon vine. I'd never had a vision. Watermelon. Then, when the watermelons became, it was replaced by a cantaloupe and a cucumber. Then a stronger. That was May 1970. Springfield, Missouri. God. That was confusion. The next morning. I asked God, who did I get with? Who did I follow? That's when he turned, sent me to John 15. Let's read. All right. At the verse 8 or 10 verse. Even very fruit, glorified God. Amen. John 15, verse 1. I am the true vine. And my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can you, except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. You see, I told this kind of out of order. But God wants it told out of order. Because in May of 1970, God talked to me about that. June, I met Derek Prince and Lydia. 71, I go to Florida. I become friends, Derek and Lydia. 72, he sends me back to Texas. 
about the Baptists, about, about everybody. <laughs> it's interesting. The verse, it says, verse 6, it says, If a man abide not in me, is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And it says, And men gather them. Men gather them. That's what Derek Prince was trying to do, to put you with somebody to be gathered. Well, so was Kenneth Hagin. Amen. So were all the preachers. So were the Methodist Church. Methodists. Yeah. All the preachers amaze me. You got to have a, you got to have a pastor. You got to submit to somebody. One well-known preacher in Dallas Fort Worth said to some people I know, Doyle Livingston, the biggest rebel in Dallas Fort Worth. Another lady. Well, no, that was what we're talking at the dinner table one night, or at least they were having dinner. And I, my name came up. She said, I know Doyle Davidson. That was the end of their conversation. <laughs> I like the one that said, as soon as I heard his name, I knew he was bad news. Oh, that really impressed me. Thank God. They wanted to destroy me, but God sent me, and God had told me about the denomination. They were confused. Amen. Thank God. I had thought about joining a lot of them. Wasn't right. Plato, they said to me, how come you came to Plato? We got enough churches in Plato. I said, because God told me to come to Plato, speak to the people of Plato. They didn't tell me to build a church. What time is it? It is 1134. You know, in Acts, when God gave you that example of Acts 13, it says, separate me out, Barnabas and Saul. Separate them. And, and when God sent you to Plano, he separated you from all those other people that you had been around. Right. You know what was interesting? I got to Plano. God said, I want you to get all the preachers together. Yeah. I said, I don't even know one. I don't know one. So this preacher called me. He had a, a dog. I was a veterinarian. He had a dog that needed some surgery. So I said, well, sure, I'll help you. He bought the bikini. He said, I must owe you nothing. God said, don't charge him. Amen. Preachers act are that way. Do you know that? Oh, yeah. This preacher's not that way. Never was. If God can't afford me, I'm not going. How's that? I was in the sign business. I had many preachers come in and say, we need a sign, but we have no money. Would you do it for free? Right. One day, Acts, no, Psalm 50, I think, says, if I were hungry, I would ask you, uh, can you find that? Psalm 50. All right. If I were hungry, I wouldn't yeah. ask you, tell you or something. I forgot what it was. I said, all right, Lord, if you wouldn't ask me, if you were hungry for something to buy you a meal or give you a meal, don't ever expect me to ask anybody on your behalf for anything. It's verse 12. If I were hungry, well, actually it goes back up. Verse um, 9, I will take no bullock out of thy house, nor he goats out of thy folds. For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountains, and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee. 
for the world is mine and the fullness thereof. That's what he told me. Right. And I said, all right. I won't be asking you for anything. Guess what? I have it. Now, I took down two notices to two former apostles this morning. God has instructed me to put it up. But they are in rebellion, and they have been for a long time. But get it straight, folks. I don't need their money, not one penny. They need my gospel. They need my authority. They need to submit to my apostleship and me as a prophet. That's what they need. I don't need your money. I haven't missed it. Since you left, and I will never miss it. Thank God, nor will I miss any of his money anywhere. Indiana, Wisconsin, California, Texas, Missouri, Oklahoma. No. I don't need your money. You need my authority. Those that have been partakers of the gospel that I preach to you or someone with me preach to you, you are my spiritual children. And I am your spiritual father. And I have authority in your life. And you need to submit to me as your spiritual father and obey, obey Hebrews 13, 17. Have you got that? I'm headed there now. Thank God. I didn't know where we were going, but I'm having fun. Amen. Thank God. Hebrews 13, 17. Right. Obey them which have the rule over you and submit yourselves. For they watch for your souls as they must give an account that they may do it with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable for you. Amen. I have to give account for you. If you, if you, or if I got you, through my gospel preaching to you, if I did, you're my Spiritual child, daughter, and son. But no, oh, we were saved when we met you. Oh, really? Really? Or were you a religionist? Were you somebody that went for some crusade and professed Christ? Which Christ? Jesus? Or Anna. Anna. Not Anna. Look, folks. This apostle and prophet doesn't play games. I didn't believe my everything I own to come out here to preach to a bunch of people that thought they were saved and righteous and didn't know anything about either one. Glory, what time is it? It is 1141. 41? Yes. Look, let's turn. Mark 10. All right. Rich young ruler. Thank God. I was not by my, I did not consider myself a rich young ruler, but a lot of people considered me rich. Verse 17, and when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running, and kneeling to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. 
Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross, and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked around about and said unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? And the disciples were astonished at his words, but Jesus answered again and said unto them, Children, how hard it is for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? And Jesus, looking on upon them, said, With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. You know what it cost me to go into the kingdom? Everything I own. It also in cost me my will, my life, my desires, my intellect, my education, everything I do. Or possess. Amen. And that's how it got where I'm at today. And you know, they can't say to you, well, you're an apostle and a prophet. That's just happened to you. But I, I had but I had to do the same thing too. You sure did. I had to give up everything. I remember when you were broke. Do you? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. No. What that? It is 1144. 1144? Right. Thank God. Look, folks. Your house is not worth you going to hell. Amen. Your business is not worth you going to hell. Your wife is not worse. You go to hell. Your children not worth. You go to hell. You must forsake everything. Everything. Thank God. <coughs> Pardon me. I believe it's a book of Luke. It count, gives it count, Mark. The word is hate. Yes. Right? Yes. You know where it's at? No. Okay, but it's hate. Hate. Hate your father, your right. mother, your wife, children, everything you own. And your own life also. That's it, right there. Oh. Did you know I was a veterinarian with a lot of skills, success. I was once testified by an expert that I was one of four top veterinarians in North Texas with the same skills, equal skill. Two of them are dead. The other was my partner, Dr. Charles Rodney Butler, and I expect to see him in heaven. They and his family, thank God, Amen. I think he's at the racetrack. No, anyways, he's, he's in Louisiana. Right. Thank God. Thank God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Time. It 
is 1147. 47? Uh-huh. Thank God. Well, let's read. Psalm 142, about David, about me, where I'm living, about you, about all of you that walk with me, that are righteous. All right? All right. I'm going to read the, the, the preempt into it. It says, it's a Michelle of David, a prayer when he was in the cave. At Adullam. The cave of Adullam, right. We got time to read a few verses. Yes, we do. Of Adullam? Yes, we do. Let's get that. All right. Verse, uh, it is 1 Samuel 22, verse 1. David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave Adullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. And every one that was in distress, and every one that was in debt, and every one that was discontented, gathered themselves unto him. And he became a captain over them, and there were with him about 400 men. If you think the people that joined to me in Plato, in Houston, in Anaheim, in Joplin, in Tulsa, in Indianapolis, South Bend, Louisiana, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, and all over America, Africa, got all of them got my tapes, free of charge. I sent over 200,000 tapes to Zimbabwe, to Malawi, Mozambique. Zambia, Tanzania, Kenya. Oh, South Africa. Thank God. I don't know where else. Mexico. About a lot of places. Got my tapes free. Many of them never heard the gospel before they heard me preach it to them. But many of them, thousands, yes, above a million in Zimbabwe. Amazing. Thank God. Amen. Thank God. Now, where are we going? Psalm 142. Right. The prayer. It's, a, it's interesting. 142 says it's a prayer. 143 says it's a psalm of right. David. So well, there's a difference. I live in both of them. Right. I cried unto the Lord with my voice. With my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. I pour out my complaint before him. I show before him my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. In the way wherein I walked, have they privily laid a snare for me. I looked on my right hand and beheld, there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. I cried unto thee, O Lord, I said, thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise thy name. The righteous shall compass me about, for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. You can read Psalm 143. I lived there too. But only a week ago did I, God show me. Psalm 142. Right. Right? Right. Was... For me, the same as David, when he was at Adullam, he prayed that prayer. And 
God's bringing me out. But I can see, I've been there eight years. God has sustained me, held me up. Thank God. My friends persecuted me. Brought my life down to the ground like a dead man. Long time dead. My spirit overwhelmed. That's what what he prayed. Thank God. God has been, he's ordered my steps. I'm going to see there already some are here. They're going to come. More. Righteous. Gift of righteousness imparted to him. Romans 5, 17. They're going to be with me. They don't have to come to Plano, wherever they're living. But they're going to be righteous. God is going to deal bountifully with me and them. Well, that's one forty two. Thank God. What a wonderful promise that God has made to a man years ago that didn't want to even do what God wanted him to do. Talk about mercy and grace be shown upon a man you're listening and watching it. What time is it? It is 11.54. Oh, we got some time. Amen. My friends, my children that I've got through the gospel of Jesus Christ You believe it. You are my spiritual children. I'm your spiritual father. And you are able to become a righteous person that's round about me. You'll have to walk with me and be a partaker of what our God bountifully blesses me. And you were walking with me. The glory of the latter house will be greater than the former house, Haggai, chapter 2. The former was Solomon. The latter is Jesus and the gospel and his people. I'm blessed to be in Plano, but I've got people, my spiritual children, of the world. All over the world. And a lot of them, thank God. Amen. Amen. Thank God. I can tell you that that Derek Prince Ministries Israel, that ministry, their spiritual children of mine, and Derek Prince Ministries, led by Dick Leggett, good friend, 
their spiritual children of this ministry, or at least they're going to walk with me in the great deliverance that God talks about in, the, in 1987 and walk with me, thank God, amen, in the pointed weeks of the harvest, God's given me authority that reaches Gollum. No, I am not bothered about it. God will bring it to pass. Watch him. Time. Amen. It, we have two minutes. You got something? No. No, the name. I'm driving just one. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Or by one must be saved. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Just one. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Grace and truth, Lord, pardon me. Grace and faith, Lord, have been put into their heart. I've got to say something. You can be saved by speaking Jesus after I say this. But Derek Prince Ministries and Derek Prince Israel will have an opportunity to hear my gospel and believe it. And I know that. I know that. As far as I know, you didn't let the gospel preach to you. You have the word of God preached to you. Amen. Speak Jesus and be saved. Jesus, 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 God bless. We invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972 Five seven eight eight zero eight two. That's nine seven two five seven eight eight zero eight two. Or write Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box eight six one three two seven, Plano, Texas seven five zero eight six. That's Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box eight six one three two seven, Plano, Texas seven five zero eight six. This program was paid for by Water of Life Church.